Welcome back to the Collective Shift channel. I'm joined today with Nick. How, How are you going? Yeah, good. Good, good. good. Um, we're here today to break down a recent report you did on the state of gaming. So often talked about as you know the next big thing in crypto and in, in Web3. So you know this this was a really good opportunity, I, I assume, for it by yourself to really gain the weeds and see where things are at. So we're looking forward today to, to breaking that down and really just the key takeaways of where gaming is going in 2023 and you know what, what are some games you've got got your eye on. So I'll let you kick it off, Nick, in terms of you know how you broke up your posts and, and yeah, talk a bit about that. Cool. Uh, I separated these two posts into a state of the play uh, of gaming and then a deeper dive into the different ways to gain exposure uh, so the first post just primarily looked at, I guess, the market opportunity for gaming. There was a lot of narratives driven around gaming. There was a lot of investment heading into last year in 2021. So I'm just getting up to speed about where that funding went, which blockchains were people building on or funding directed to. And then in the end, looking at which ways of exposure are perhaps the best for you. Yeah, nice, nice. We'll kick it off then with with part with part one, over an overall, you know, overview of the space and, and where things are at, as you said, a lot of funding in it, particularly last year. Um, what was your sort of uh, overview or summary of, I suppose, where are there a lot of games like still being developed? Are there some that are already being released? So at the moment, the figures at about 64% of games that are yet to be released. So the far majority are still waiting in development. This might be in private beta or still uh, in alpha mode. So it really depends on the level of, I guess, games that these you know gaming developers are already prepared to put it out in the public. Mm. So main takeaway here is that there's still a lot of games that are yet to be released. Mm. And a key reason why I think I'm both um, in agreement that we are yet to see the best game that come out yet a lot of the games are pretty low quality uh, or have very basic rudimentary gameplay. Mm. So really excited to see the next wave of these games to come out because we're, we're no doubt going to see that. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, when we're talking about, you know, the blockchains that these are built on, you know, obviously they're blockchain games. Um, can we just talk a bit about, you know, the, the different, I guess, types of games that are out there? How much do they even use the blockchain or, or is, it, is it different for different sort of games? Yeah, you can probably separate this into on-chain games and off-chain games. Uh, there are very uh, little actual fully on-chain games. So what I mean by this is games that embed the entire game logic and gameplay into the chain. Mm. So this might be done through uh gameplay like there was a few that was called like wolf game or there was another one called loot mm. uh, which had nfts and then you're able to use those nfts um, in different ways so there are very good games that are actually on chain at the moment it's like a mixture where games will have their core gaming assets on chain right. uh, you have transfer you have different tokens that you can buy and that you can use in these games they may save certain state of the game on chain, but then a lot of the, the core gameplay uh, is off chain. So it's sort of a mixture. Yeah, sure, sure. So yeah, wide scope there. And I guess that's why these sort of <laughs> updates, are, updates are important. I think just finally on, on part one, I know you talked uh, a bit, covered a bit about you know the, the year ahead for certain you know trends or even particular individual games. I know these might come up in, in our next sort of part two, but was there any one, and just picking one out of those from part one, a game that you really are keen on? Uh, the game that I think a lot of the community are looking forward to is Alluvium, uh, mainly because of the massive investment that's went into the game. Uh, it has a lot of practical use cases for NFTs and tokenization, mm. and this idea of, I guess, giving revenue back to token holders. So it's one of the core pillars, and I think one of the ones that everyone's looking forward to. Uh, that one is all in beta at the moment. So mm -hmm. I think in 2023, we should see that hit public and start to see what the public's reception is and whether you will see uh, the first real significant players being onboarded that aren't necessarily like crypto native. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. I think um, I did just spot here at the, at the end of your report, I think this is something that you know we've talked about in, in throughout 2022 even um, with the research team but um, we've got here, I think it's worth mentioning, 
you know, some things that you sort of took away or were surprised by. I think a lot of people naturally, when they're in the industry, are talking like bullish, like they're bullish on the future of it. I guess just give me give me one thing that you think, you know, not all roses, so it's not all optimistic. What are some, what's just one thing that you would focus on and want to communicate of something to maybe just be aware of this when we're talking about the growth of the gaming space? Yeah, so a small one would be just the time it takes for these games to release. As I said, 64% of games are yet to be released. It takes so long to deliver sure. a massive game. But at the same time, I'm also really concerned about this idea of fun. Mm. So once you start to provide real economic incentives into a game, yeah. it starts yeah. to create and disrupt <laughs> sure. what that game's doing. Yeah. And you get people who don't even like the game playing the game, yeah. farming the game, and kind of ruins any fun, uh, any competitive to it. Mm. So it's going to be how you balance that. Uh, because you can really get a lot of misaligned incentives. Yeah, no, that was something to behold last year or the year before with the Axie Infinity in particular. And this probably takes us now into, you know, your second uh, part of your report that you released for members recently about, yeah, all the different ways to get investment exposure to this space. I think for your everyday person, they hear the word NFT, you know, metaverse, land, you know, like ERC20 token, like what's that? Like all these different ways, what is the best way to get exposure to gaming? So I really liked how you broke it down in this. Do you just want to maybe talk through like a, a few of these sort of categories? Yeah, so I broke it down into sort of eight broad strokes here. Uh, one is like the blockchain themselves. Uh, this is a more of an indirect way to get exposure. If there's mm. a lot of uh, blockchains are basically in the space of selling the block space. So at the moment we're seeing these blockchains struggle for demands for people to use it. Mm. If blo if blockchain games really take off and there are a strong uh, demand for the blockchains, then it's sort of investing in the blockchains themselves as a bit of a byproduct mm. um, yeah. of that success. Uh, other low effort ways are like indexes. I know there's some metaverse indexes out there, uh, which allows you like a one click, one token hold of a distributed a set of metaverse tokens. Uh, we also have things like the gaming platforms themselves uh, the games themselves, sure. uh, which are more risky in terms of uh, the metaverse or like the gaming might win and become a very big industry. But if you sort of put all your eggs in one game that mm. didn't make it, whereas a lot of games just won't make it, mm. uh, then you're sort of out of luck there. So this kind of looks at different ways to manage that. Uh, another one is gaming guilds, uh, which are these collection of groups or DAOs that share gaming assets and they lend them out. They can sort of generate revenue. Some of these debt, these gaming guilds have their own proprietary like uh, funds of sorts. They invest, they take profits. Uh, they even create the games themselves. They may have gaming studios. So there's a lot of wide variety um, of exposure uh, we got there. Another one is lands, which mm. is pretty fraught with danger. That's probably the, 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 the riskiest end you can get, uh, mainly because there is uh, no real utility for many in-game lands. Mm. Sometimes it's built on a lot of promises. So it's virtual, virtual land. Yeah, virtual land. That a lot of the time is still an early stage of a game or a metaverse. Yeah, right. and, and a lot of people don't understand that these could fall victim to similar inflation that normal tokens have. Right. So people may think that there's a fixed amount of land, but what's to stop them from just making more lands and mm. then increasing you know the amount in this in the market which then really impacts price mm -hmm. so things you want to look at there is like what's the i guess the sustainability of it and is there any real utility value uh some games like alluvium i've been seeing trying to bake in uh the game itself into the land so right. um, the land is critical because you need the resources to, to play the game and and to basically fuel the in-game economy mm -hmm. um, so yeah but be very careful of sort of the metaverse line doesn't have any real utility yeah yeah definitely gotta yeah read read the blog post and you know, get in the community ask ask the founders of the team you know what the purpose of xyz is we'll probably finish off here nick with uh axie infinity is probably almost the poster child um to date of the gaming space i think maybe that's a, a, an example maybe there where you can just talk about probably wrapping up some different ways to gain exposure I think they have like some some even even more ways of what, of adding on to what you've just talked. Yeah, about. so perhaps yeah, this presents a good example to look at mm -hmm. those different ways. So Axie have their own native tokens 
they have the Axie governance token, then they have this uh, SLP token. Uh, this is a common trap people fall into because they don't realize what these two tokens may be used for. Right. I've seen a lot of people try and accumulate one token, but it's actually the rewards token, which is paid out to players and is highly inflationary and doesn't mm. have um, a set fixed supply. Whereas the governance token has access to all the revenues generated uh, via the game and which sort of gains uh, a lot of momentum and a lot of treasury value mm. that you may have like governance rights over. Uh, so that was a big one because we've seen the Axie token perform much better than that rewards token, which really, uh, really sunk low because of the high inflation. Gotcha. And yeah. at the same time, they do have their in-game land as well. Mm. So there's sort of a, a few ways you can go about it. Yeah. And then I think finally, those, they've got those little Axie characters, don't they? As yeah. Well, which <laughs> yeah, that's another one too, uh, that it's the NFTs yeah. themselves that perhaps people are thinking is where the value may be held rather than the tokens yeah uh, so yeah these are these little creatures that you need to play the game called axes and you can sort of breed them as a sort of about land they do have inflation themselves because right. they can only be bred a certain amount of time or um, they have certain limits on what you can and can't do with them mm. so yeah that's another one a lot of rare ones have went for very high prices mm. so that's a, another uh, option uh, <laughs> for exposure to the yeah. space yeah well like we're a very like primitive stages i feel like of crypto gaming yeah here we are with, you know, seven or even eight, as you said, ways to get exposure. Um, probably just to, in conclusion, Nick, probably, you know, your takeaway for like the, the busy investor out there is, you know, work full time, don't have much time to, you know, keep up to date with crypto and whatnot. What was your probably, was there even a consensus or something that you strongly felt was the best way to get exposure or was it trade-offs for everyone? Yeah, there's all trade-offs for everyone. There is, I guess, indexes, that's the easiest, the quickest, but then at the same time, there's also, I guess, the blockchains themselves or maybe these platforms sure. uh, that may, may capture or generate some of this. At the end of the day, it is a lot of time sink to dive into games themselves, gaming platforms, looking at who may be the winners. Mm. So I guess that's why looking at indexes, the blockchains themselves, who's being built on them, um, mm. and more importantly, which tokens can accrue any uh, substantial treasury or revenue model there. Mm, yeah, very well put. No, there's a, a lot to definitely uh, keep an eye on, and I think throughout 2023, I know you'll be you'll be doing another one of these later in the year, and you know I think um, yeah, there's a lot to a lot to keep our head out, but it's exciting. It's, it's all exciting, and um, we're keen to see what happens in uh, in 2023. Yeah, a lot of money being put into gaming, so keen to see the games that come out, uh, especially next year. I think we're going to see a lot of big names into nice. the space. Uh, encouraging stuff so yeah to see that full report do uh head over to collectiveshift.io um and it is available available for members but uh yeah i think that was a, a nice a nice summary there to get get the gist of where gaming's at and um for also to to find out anything more that we do here at collective shift uh we are offering currently uh free crypto strategy calls so head on to our website at collectiveshift.io and follow the prompts and you'll be able to book in some time with our founder, Ben, to, to walk you through you know, the state of play in crypto and, and potential sort of general investment pathways that people tend to go on. So until then, thank you for watching.